27. This one is on angles and triangles, then the Pythagorean theorem, and then the Pythagorean triplets. Okay. Now, um, first thing I want you to see um, is that this two lines create intersecting points. Okay? That's the first thing I want you to see. Not only that, you also have angles into each of these right here. See that? Uh -huh. Alright, now the next thing they want to show you is three triangles. One, two, three. They all look different, all kind of, all of them look completely different. Alright, this one is 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and then when you have a little sign like that, that means 90. Okay, this one, all three are exactly the same, 60, 60, and 60. And then this one has a really fat one of 135 degrees, 25 degrees, and 20 degrees. Now, what I want you to understand, hopefully you know this, is that um, whichever angle is the largest, whatever is across it is the longest. So, this would be the longest side, then this 25 and 20, so 25 is larger. This would be the second longest side, and then this 20, this would be the third longest side. You see that? Yep. So, it's always good to know that the opposite side of the angle is the longest. All right, this one, they happen to be all the same because 60, 60, and 60. Yep. Okay? This one, which was the largest, longest angle? The left side. Very good. So, this one, because this is 90 degrees. Yeah. The is bottom. our longest one. The bottom. So in the bottom. Then the right. And then this one. Okay? So it's just a quick um, little thing. Now, do you know what each triangle always equals in the middle? 180. 180. Very good. Quick little thing. Now, the next thing I want you to see is, let me just draw one of these up here. When we have a square, okay, right there, 90 degree angle, um, this can be called a side or a leg, side and side. And this one right here is called the hypotenuse. Okay? Now, there's a guy named Pythagoras. He was a mathematician and a Greek philosopher. And he realized that when you had a shape like this with a 90 degree angle, that 3, 4, and 5. Now, 3 squared would become 9, which would look like this. Three squared. This one would be four squared, which would be 16 squares. Three squared, which would be nine squares. And then 5 squared is the sum of 16 and 9, which is 25, which is 5 squared. You see that? Yep. So that's what Pythagoras realized. Okay? That the sum of this squared and this squared equals this squared. Okay? Now, this is very helpful to use, and um, especially when you're doing engineering and mathematics and physics. Um, to know this theorem, okay? So the theorem, the theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And for this triangle above, it was a squared, b squared equals c squared. Mm -hmm. A was 3, b was 4, and c was 5. See that? Mm -hmm. So 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16, and 5 times 5 is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. Okay, yeah. so this is the main part you need to know. That is the Pythagorean Theorem. So if you're on the ACT and it says use the Pythagorean Theorem to answer da 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 da. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to know. Alright, now let's do um, another problem, for example. Um, they not, may not be as easy as that all the time, so let's look. Um, I've got a 5, a 4, and a P, okay? So, again, the one that's across from the 90 degrees is your hypotenuse or your C, okay? 
in this case is a P, but it's your C. Yeah. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared would be 4 squared, B would be 5 squared, and C, which is just our P, okay, squared. Now, pay attention to this for just a minute. All right, now, if 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25, then what is P squared? 40, it's 41. 41. Okay, now, since this is P squared, that's 41, okay, do you remember P squared, how do I get rid of that squared? Mm, what's the opposite, well, what's the opposite of squaring something? The Square rooting it. Yeah. Okay, so, since this is 42, or um, P squared is... 41, we want to get rid of this square, so, the, uh, so, we, yeah, so we do that on the other side, remember that? Yeah. And so then that erases that, and now it says P equals 41. the square root of 41. And the square root of 41, there's no answer to it, so P is the square root of 41. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Now, remember how used to we were doing plus negative square root of 41s? Yes. We were doing this. You don't have to on this because you'll always have a positive answer when you're doing triangles and stuff. Okay? Yep. Let's do another one because this one gets, the next, gets a little bit harder. Okay? Here's another example. Uh, now they flipped it upside down, which that's okay. We'll just do it like they have it. So, K5 square root of 61. All right. Now remember, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yes. All right. A is k. I'm going to put squared. Yep. B is 5 squared. Is 5. Whoops. 5 squared. And c is square root of 61. Square root of 61, but we've got a square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this doesn't make sense, does it? No. Nope. No. So the square root of 61 is squared. Mm -hmm. Okay? Square root of 64 squared. Watch this. What is the square root of 64? 8. 8. And 8 squared would be? 64. 64. So the square root of 64 squared would just be? 64. 64. It basically eliminates it. Yeah. It's like doing the opposite. Yeah. So let's go on and answer that. That answers that. You with me? Yep. All right. So now I've got K squared plus... 5 squared equals 61. So you can move the 5 squared to the opposite side. Once well, that's you, what an answer is. Which you answer at 25. 25. So good. then you move it to the opposite side, it becomes minus 25. Very good. So this plus 25 comes over there and becomes minus 25. Mm -hmm. And that equals... 36. 36? Mm, no. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 36. Okay. And then K squared equals 36. Yep. And then K would be 6. Okay, and another way you can answer that is, since Divide. I have the square, how do I get rid of that square? You make it a, a so I'm square it across root. The equal, root. becomes a square root. And it becomes the square root of. So yeah. that erases that. Remember how you do the opposite of square is square root. So K equals the square root of 36. So K equals 6. Yep. Okay? Yep. And because we're not, we don't want to do negative numbers with triangles. So it's just a positive 6. Got it? Yep. All right, let's do another one. Make sure you're getting it. Here's the next one. All right, now, I didn't do a very good job drawing that. Okay, that's a right angle right there. Okay, so I've got 12, 8, and M. Again, 8 squared plus M squared equals 12 squared. Yep. Right? So 8 that, squared. That, that, that. 64. 64. Plus m squared. squared equals 12 squared, 144. 12 times 12 is 144. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then this plus 64 becomes minus 64 when we move it across the equal. That's and 80. That's going to get 80. 80. Yep. So that's going to be 80. Okay. So now m squared equals 80. And yep. again, to get rid of that square, it just says m. The square, square we move it across the equal side, and we have to do the opposite of that, which is the square root of. 
So yeah. m equals square root of 80. Yep, and that doesn't help. Actually, does it? Yeah. Is it not 80? I don't know. 144 minus 64. 8 squared plus... Ah! I didn't just, I just called it. Come out. Let's do that again, okay? So, <laughs> did you catch it? Um, I wrote it wrong. Okay, so this is the hypotenuse. Yeah. That's the C. Oh. That's what we did. So, I didn't re make reference to that, but I just now see it in the book. Okay, so, here we go. 8 squared times... Um, Plus 12 squared, because a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is our c is our m. Yeah. Okay, now let's try it again. 8 six. times 8 is 64. 12 times 12 is 144. Um, I think it's 208, I think. 208. 208. Yep. Okay, so then m squared, 208. m squared equals 208. m squared equals 208. But, stay with me. What do I do? I need to get rid of that square root. Move it across the equals and it becomes the opposite, which is the square root of. So m equals the square root of 208. Now, do you remember from previous learnings how to make this the smallest it can be? You do the factor tree. You do do the factor tree. Okay, so, but it is square root, so we have to leave it in the square root form yes. in a minute. Okay, so let's go 2 Four. times 104. Yeah. Okay, so I've got the square root of 2. That's the only one. Everything's the square root of. Yeah. 52. Because this is the square root of. 52 and 2. 52 and 2. Yeah. 26 and 2. 26 and 2. 13 and 2. And 13 and 2. Okay. So let's circle all the ones that we finished with. All right. Those are the all the um, prime factors. Yeah. Okay, so let me go ahead and write those out. The answer to this is square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of times times square root of, square root of 13. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if you have two of the same number, you can just make yep, it. Yep, when two. you get two of the same number, it just makes it one regular number. Two. Two of the same number just makes it one regular number. Exactly. And then square root of 13. And these are all times in so between four, here. Four. So 2 times 2 is 4, yeah. 4 square root of 13. Final answer, m equals 4 square root of 13. Yep. Yeah. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's move to the Pythagorean triplets. And the only reason, well, I mean, it's very important, but the main importance this is used for is for people that um, are building houses and such. Okay? And so let me show you this real quick. Whoops. This is the 3, 4, 5 triplet. They've also got one that's a little bit bigger, the 6, 8, 10 triplet. And they've even got another one that's three times as big, which is the 9, 12, and 15 triplet. Alright? Now, the reason why these are called the triplets is because remember how we started off with this? 3 squared times four, plus 4 squared equals, equals 5, five squared. squared. Same thing here. This is just twice this size. Yeah. Three, three, twice of 3 is 6. Twice of 4 is 8. Twice of 5 is 2. This one is 3 times as much as this one. Yes. 3 times this, 3 times this, and 3 times this. You see yes. that? Mm -hmm. So these are triplets. So, for example... What a person would do if they're building a house is they would measure, and it would probably be a good idea to do a longer measurement if you were building something huge like a house. So what they would do is start at the corner, and they would measure with their board 9 feet or 9 inches, okay, and stop. Got it? Now they would take from here and go from the bottom up to this spot 12 inches. So 12 inches and 9 inches. Now, when they measure this spot to this spot, it should equal 15. Mm -hmm. If it's a little bit off, they know that this is not straight. Yes. Because if it's a little bit off, then it would only be 13 or whatever. So that's why the Pythagorean triplet is so important and why they use it. Mm -hmm. So these are the triplets. Okay, they also give you a few more that's on here. On here, 
um, but it doesn't really matter. Okay? Right. So that's the triplets, just so you know. Um, there's several you can look. There's the 5, 12, 13 triplet, the 8, 15, 17 triplet. They just got several, several triplets. Okay? And the way they figure out what the missing number in the triplet is, is doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yeah. Same just really. Okay? That's lesson 97.